Cool. So everyone, as you can see, we're back. Had to come back really quick to really go deeper into this H pile. <laughs> Bit sandwich here, been here with links. And we are gonna go, you know, not 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 like super data scientist technical, but we're gonna explain some stuff and keep it as simple as possible and really want you to digest what what links is doing, why you need to get links. You know, why why should you just look at a project like this? and just say, okay, I can just start here with research and say, oh, this is a good project. Ben, let us have it. What's going on? Mark, thanks for hosting this, uh, this explainer that we're doing for um, explaining how HPOW, Hybrid Proof of Work, works for the Lynx project. And that's really what this video, right? That's what this yep. video is about. Yep. So I appreciate you taking the time to do this with me. We've had a bunch of people ask, <laughs> I love talking about it so much. So when you and I were talking about it before, I was like, let's just schedule a video. I want to, yeah. I want to record it because it's, e it might be easier for me to talk about it than, mm. I mean, of course it's already written out and you can, you'll be able to read the updated white paper soon enough. And, yeah. yeah. But not everybody reads the papers. Not everybody gets it. Yeah. I think, I think for me personally, it's, it's cool to read it. I can read, but then we have audio and video. It's like now your yeah. brain is working like, Oh, I can put this together. Oh, I see that. Right. And when I say something that maybe well, I, you can, at least you can interrupt me and ask questions like, well, all right, Ben, you said about that, or I read this. What about this? You know, what happens? Okay. I think it's just easier when we do video to kind of do it this way. So I agree. Yeah. All right. So this is awesome. So thanks for hosting um, this explainer on the, on your YouTube channel. Yes, indeed. Right. Okay. So what I want to do is we're going to use uh, the game of bingo as our metaphor, right? Bingo. So we're going to use our game of bingo as the metaphor for mining. And, for, uh, and so you've played, right? Yeah, for all of you who know bingo or don't know bingo, it's a B-I-N-G-O game. You start with the B, then the I, and, and it's a word. Yeah, I played. Many yeah, so times. it's five It's five letters. Yeah. So how do you play? So let's, for those that don't know, okay. and just because it might help with the story later on, because we're going to use this as a metaphor. Got you. Okay. So, see, so why don't you describe how you understand how you play it, and I'm I'm guessing we both you know, play it the same way. So you yeah. go ahead and start it. So, well, just for me thinking of it right now, it's almost like this, almost like an encrypted game, you know. <laughs> well, I'm talking about the game. So when I go to the VA and it's bingo night. Oh. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So I go to the VA and it's bingo night. Um, I walk in the door. Oh. And there's usually a greeter there <laughs> and they sell, they sell that card, you know? So here's your card and it's got, you know, it's a bingo card I mean, and it's got a grid on it yeah, and they sure. sell the card to you and, uh, or they sell a stack of cards to you. Yep. Yeah, you get a stack of cards, you get a stack. Right. And you pay like five bucks for the card yeah. or a dollar, whatever. That's your donation. Cause it's, you know, it's a fundraiser. There we and go. so, uh, yeah. So you buy your card mm -hmm. and then you go into the bingo hall and you sit down. Looks kind of like this. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's exactly, except it's five across it's five. five down. Yeah. Five so by five that? square. 25 squares, right? 25 squares. And, yeah. And, and so yeah. now when everybody sits down, <laughs> everyone's got one card. And so, uh, and they got, they got their stamp or their sticker or their whatever, because you reuse the same card over and over again for each game. Got you. Okay. And we, of course, you got to remember each card has, um, numbers yeah across the top i think and across the bottom or sometimes they're in they're in the squares mm -hmm. but they're randomly distributed so each card is unique that's true yeah yeah each, each well you hope they are oh <laughs> yeah you kind of hope they are right because maybe that maybe the guy at the bing at the va <laughs> his printer like, like, he only, <laughs> like he only went and printed out like 10 unique cards <laughs> or 20 unique cards there we go uh, but let's go ahead and just assume that it's a random each generation. Each one is randomly generated, right? Gotcha. And it's and so you know you got the the letters across and down, and so you you want to get a match. Gotcha. And so what you're looking for is a match of all five across, five down, or five diagonal. There we right? go. That's bingo. Yeah. And that's and anyway, if you get that, you win. Well, well, how would you get? So when you're all in the hall, everyone's all sitting there. There's somebody up at the front with the with the with oh the, yeah the big right? ball the roller, spinning. and it drops out a ball. And it's like, it'll be either be, uh, it'll either be, um, 
Well, it won't be twenty. Oh, it'll be. I think I can't remember exactly, but sometimes it's a letter and a number. And the be point like, is that you get the five in a row. But everyone yeah. has I twenty. Put this sticker on I twenty. That's exactly right. And that's everyone exactly. has a fine I twenty. And that's that's really like where the excitement is. Did I get the letter and the number? Like, right. And so you got to look at your card and you got to see if you got the match. There's different interpretations. You know, my my wife and I we go play um, beer bingo, music <laughs> bingo, at the <laughs> at the brewery. And they basically do the same. They have the card. You win bingo if you got five in a row. And they're basically playing music. Uh, I see. Okay. Yeah. And so, you know, maybe you got to, maybe you got to label the band, the, this, that song. So they're playing a Duran Duran song. Okay. And, you know, maybe you got to know that that's a Duran Duran song. And you hope that Duran Duran is on the card. It's on. Got you. And each card you hope is unique because I got Duran Duran somewhere on my card, but she doesn't. And if we do both have it on there, maybe they're in a different spot. Yeah. So that's just the randomness of it. Cool. All right. All right. So I think we so get it. Much, yeah. yeah, we kind of understand how bingo works. There's different interpretations of it. But yeah, you want to get that five in a row to match. So that's a lot like mining. So mm. think of it as your, yeah, your computer right now is a card. Okay. Uh, my, my computer that I'm on right now is a card. I see. And we're searching for blocks. And we're searching for blocks. We're kind of gotcha. going through that thing. And every once in a while, Let's go back 10 years. This is when Bitcoin first came out. We could do this with our computers, right? Back 10 years. So after a little while, with a little bit of luck, I'd get bingo. Mm, 25 Bitcoins. I'd get bingo and earn that binding reward. And that was the prize. You know, now, you know, you go to the VA, your prize is what, a bag of M&Ms? When I was in high school, it was a bag of M&Ms <laughs> uh, when we used to play. And okay. so, and at the, at the brewery, you get a free beer if you win, which is awesome. So there's a prize for playing. Um, in the case of Bitcoin, you get the prize is the incentive to keep playing. Yep. And, you know, it's a pretty juicy prize, right? It's worth a lot of money if you win bingo when you're mining Bitcoin. Yeah. So there's an incentive. So a lot of people want to play. So let's go back to the metaphor. So that's a lot of people coming into the bingo hall. Got gotcha. you. All right. So, there's, so when we first started in 2010 or whenever it was, when people started mining it, there were a lot of people going into the bingo hall buying one card which means a lot of people with one computer uh -huh. and they were all competing to win that block. And it was kind of like a random distribution. Um, you know, some computers were a little bit faster than others. Yeah. And, uh, and maybe that increased the likelihood they might win that block, M might win bingo. So this is where that whole the competitive nature. Yeah. Now, Bitcoin's successful as long as people keep winning. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. They don't care who, they don't care how often, they don't care whatever. They just say, somebody's got to win. So Bitcoin does. Like somebody's got to win, just keep doing it. And as long as you keep doing that, all the transactions and the other stuff that it does is more secure. More secure. So yeah. Just somebody keep winning. And we're going to incentivize you to come to the bingo hall by giving you a prize if you win. So a lot of people show up. So that's why big mining is so cool. Right? Mining is so competitive and so fun. Mm. So some people got together and so they got smart. And they said, uh, well, geez, you know what? I want to increase my likelihood of winning bingo yep. because the prize is so juicy. Pile it on. So, <laughs> so I'm going I'm to buy two cards at the door. Mm -hmm. Instead of me competing with just one card, I've now got this card and another card. Yeah. So now I'm competing against all the other people in the room with two bingo cards. Well, as you can guess, that increases my probability of winning. Yep, to win. Uh -huh. And getting that reward. Well, they're not the only smart person in the room. <laughs> Everyone's grim more. And so before you know it, people are mining Bitcoin, not with their computers anymore, but with their, with their video graphics cards. GPUs, yep. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And uh, uh, floating point processors and all, it, it gets progressively uh, more competitive because people are yeah. chasing after that reward. That price. Before you know it, now people are mining with these ASICs, which are, if you don't know what an ASIC is, it's like- a, I see, yeah. It's a, you know, it's a special type of machine that doesn't do anything but mine. But mine. It's super, super fast. Mm -hmm. So now that bingo hall isn't with, filled with a bunch of guys, the <laughs> guys, with one card. You know, they're now, think of it, you can imagine, like, there's that one guy, <laughs> and he's got, like, 10 cart tables. Oh, man. Filled with cards. Little and machine. he's really fast at, like, finding, you know, when I3 comes up, he's like, doo -doo -doo -doo, yeah, stamp, 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 stamp. Uh -huh. And he's hoping he's going to win bingo. Now, but, but he's doing it. Other people are doing that too. That's true. And, but nobody's playing now with just one card anymore. 
Yeah. Because there's, no, there's just no chance of winning. You're not going to win against that guy with all those cards. So that's a mining pool. That's what mining pools are now. So you got, what, F2 pool or whatever the F, you have slush pool. You got these big pools. All these individual miners are like, hey, Ben, you going to the VA hall? You going to play bingo tonight? Pool I, instead of me going and playing individually, I'll just give you my card. Yeah. Add it to your card table. Mm-hmm. And if you win, just give me my share of the reward. That's, that's what a mining pool is. There you go. So, so we've pretty much described mining. Now, all that is, you know, you know, people are paying a lot of money for these cards now. There's a lot of investment. I paid yeah. for that card. Had to pay for that table. There's fees. There's this whole business on it. Mm-hmm. Lynx comes to the story and says <laughs> this. Um, rule number one with Lynx. If you're playing bingo tonight and you've won, you can't win another game mm. for 60 more games. Whoa. 60 games. Because, you know, you play bingo over and over again. Someone wins a game, you start another game of bingo. I see. If you win a game, whether you're playing with one card or a whole table of cards, cards, even if you win, you can keep playing if you want. That's cool. But even if you win, 60 games have to pass in order for you to be able to win again. And how how long does one game of lengths take? (laughs) Well, one game is equal to one block. So... Mm-hmm. Yeah. So your question is perfect. Like, what's the block time for links? It's on average about 30 seconds. There you go. Yeah. So you got to wait. <clears throat> what's that? 30 minutes. 30 minutes. You got to wait 30 minutes if you win a block with that particular mining address I see. that you won with. So it's not just that dude. I, don't, I can't identify him by his IP address. I got to, how do I identify that guy? I can only identify him by the address that he yeah. won with. Yeah. It's the only way I can truly do it. Because remember, we got consensus on the network. Everybody on the network globally needs to be able to know if this guy who just won says, hey, I won again, the network is going to say, no, uh uh-uh. Mm-hmm. I see that you won last time. So your block that you're submitting, your candidate block that you're submitting, I'm not going to allow it. Orphaned. <laughs> yeah, it's orf- well, it's not orphaned. It's just dropped. It's not quite orphaned yet. That wouldn't be it's close. Um, yeah, so that, that's different. But um, yeah, so that, that block wouldn't pass. And so yeah. that's how the consensus works for rule number one. Okay. So that's, that's kind of cool. So someone's going to show up with all these cards. <laughs> if, <laughs> that, yeah, they're going to win the first time. People are going to be like, well, an ASIC shows up on the Lynx network. Aren't they going to win? Yeah, they're going to win the first one. They may even win the second one because they're using different cards, different addresses. I see. But the, what's the chances that they're going to win the third one? If they use the same address again, they can't win that one again. Mm-hmm. All right. So, so you're going to say, Ben, all right, that's kind of a cool idea, but it's not super foolproof. Mm. You're right. You're right. Because links HPOW uses three rules, not just one. So I got another one. So the first <laughs> rule of our new bingo game is you Try can't it. win. Yeah, you can't win more than one bingo game every sixty games. That's rule number one. Um, rule number two. Uh, and this is borrowing some ideas from proof of stake. Mm, I like that. <laughs> yeah. If you just show up to the bingo game with your bingo card and you win. Mm-hmm. the guy that's working the, the balls that hands out the reward, he's going to, and you win, he's, you're going to say, Hey, I got bingo. I, I won the block. My minor kicked ass. I didn't win a block in the last 60 blocks and I won it. The, 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 the guy that's running the bingo game, he's going to walk over to you and you go, okay, that's cool. Um, do you already have some links? Did you already, do you, do you already have some uh, change in your pocket? Some links? I see. And if you don't, you don't win. Whoa. Yeah. If you don't have okay. any, you don't win. You actually take that winning and it goes to somebody else. Okay. You don't win, you don't win the block. Somebody else wins it. Nice. So nice. you're again, your candidate block, mm-hmm. if you don't have any with the within, if you don't have any links inside that address for the reward, the network says, uh, yeah, we see that you didn't win a block in the last 60 blocks. That's rule number one. Yeah. But you don't you didn't have enough coin to meet the oh. minimum requirement for that address at this time, at this moment. Yeah. So you can't have it. You can't have the block. Man. So yeah. all you need all three to win in H. Yeah. We've only covered two of them. You, you gotta, gotta have all three. Two. You gotta have all three. Oh. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> right. Okay. 
All right, so, so now that's rule number two. Oh, by the way, with rule number two, that amount that you have to have is dynamic. Mm, I it see. changes. Sometimes you have to have, the minimum amount that you have to have is 1,000 links. Okay. And if you pay attention to the price of links, I mean, I don't even know if that's a penny worth you of just, links. It's not a lot. Grab a million, just go stick it in. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's, yeah, yeah, it's so it's so low price. You know, it's a big deal, yeah. right? So it's easy. It's not like it's this big barrier, like some master nodes. You got to kick in $10,000 in order to run a master node. Now, it doesn't work like that. We don't do that to people. But you got to have something. And there's some reasons for it, which I won't bore you with. But it has to do, some of it has to do with spam attacks. And gotcha. uh, But we're taking advantage of some of the economics of how master nodes are successful because nice. they lock up money. Yep. You know, they lock up money inside of those containers yep. and there's some economic benefits to doing that. There's a, it helps impacts a valuation and is it inflation or deflation? I can't recall, but supply yeah, it has demand. some positive impacts for the valuation of the coin. Yeah. So with that, like supply, supply and demand play is dynamic, whereas a thousand is the minimum, <clears throat> but anytime you could be more than a thousand. Yeah, it could be. It can, and, and also that dynamic number, uh, it could go really, really crazy high. The max is the max ceiling is a hundred million. Oh, cool. That's not bad. Yeah. So if, if you have a hundred million links inside that one mining address that you're mining with, you're going to be fine. Okay. You, you can, you'll always pass rule number two. Gotcha. So that's the easy way in. You'd be like, well, yeah. all right. Yeah. You know, like I kind of see how I can get past rule number one. Yeah. And now I just gave you the I just gave you the solution. You can get past rule number two if you put a hundred million links inside of each one of the Address. addresses. Yep. And each one of the addresses is each one of the cards that you're mining your bingo with. Yeah. So it, that's going to get kind of expensive. I don't know what a hundred million links goes for right now, but uh, maybe uh, three or four hundred dollars. Yeah, I'd have to look it up on the exchanges to see what it goes for. It you changes know, every day, though. You can't get yeah. the solid answer to that. Right. All right. So that's just rule number two. Uh, rule number three is this. Okay, so let's change the how the bingo works a little bit. So remember, you got all the cards on the table. Um, we assumed that they were like white, or in this case, like brown, right? uh -huh. and they're all the same color. All the same color. Let's go ahead and assume that there's actually different colors. Mm. <laughs> so when so when I declare, when he, like, the guy that's spinning the thing and he lets the ball out and he's like, yeah, I five. Mm. And I look at one of my cards and I'm like, oh, crap. Um, I didn't win a block in the last 60 blocks. Yeah. I got more, I got enough to satisfy rule number two. I got enough in my links wallet to that thing. Mm. Um, I'm going to say, hey, I think I got bingo. And he's going to go, okay, uh, I'm going to randomly select a color from this other bin right here. <laughs> Again, <laughs> it's like it's and he doesn't know it and only at the moment that you say i won bingo does he say it's blue I see. and he's I gonna see. go is your card blue and i'm gonna go ah my card's not blue man i didn't win and so, now, so what's, what's the reason for all of these this complication <laughs> yeah so they're barriers they're yeah. barriers to slow down uh, or to create disincentives for an individual I see. from walking into the mining hall with a pocket full of cash, buying up all the cards, Yeah. You know, getting 10 cart tables together and winning all the blocks, mm. winning all the prize rewards. I see. Right, because so, at the end of the night, that person's gonna walk away and it kind of takes the fun out of it. All yes. the other people that just showed up, yeah. You know, yeah. They're, they're hoping they're gonna win a bag of M&Ms or whatever the prize is, they can't because this one, <laughs> Greedy, you know, bingo player shows up and he takes everything. The Grinch just takes the whole bag. Just give right. it to me. <laughs> right. Now in, in Bitcoin world, yeah, you got one super powerful miner who shows up and they're winning all the blocks. You know, like, yeah. you, you gotta, you know, someone's gonna be like, Ben, is that really that big of a deal? That miner made that investment in all that hardware mm -hmm. and they're doing all that hard work. Let them have the money. And you know what? I agree. If they if they want to do all that work and they want to get the reward, let yeah. them do that. That's awesome. The negative is there's a there's a downside to it. There's a downside. If a single person, a single mine, not a person, but if a single miner yeah. wins enough blocks in a row, bad things happen. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you can get they can they can create malformed blocks mm. or malformed transactions. They could do double spends. You could have a fifty one percent attack, and the 
they're rewriting Everybody the matrix. That's, what's that? I said they're rewriting the matrix. <laughs> they are. They're rewriting how the the chain works properly. Yeah. And so, uh, and that impacts the credibility of the blockchain. And so people may not use it anymore. You know, if someone apps with it enough. People are going to say, well, I don't think that my Bitcoin's worth anything because you can screw with it. Mm. Uh, or someone double spent it. So it has no value. I mean, it kind of breaks the whole point of why we have Bitcoin, right? Yeah. 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 So those are the three rules. So uh, I'll go through it again. So the, so the first rule is you can't win a bingo game. You can't win a block more off. You have to wait 60 blocks 60. in between. This is for each address. Yep. Not for each IP, not for each mining rig. It's for the address that you mine with. The rig, really you get the re mining reward. Mm -hmm. um, that mining address, if it wins, it has to have a minimum number, and it's a dynamic value. It has mm -hmm. to have a minimum number of links in it at the time you win the block. And then the third rule is you have to be super lucky. And at, at rollout, um, it's a oh, 1 man. in 16 chance of oh, you getting a match. That's that last yeah, one in 16. Jeez. And that's dynamic, by the way. Yes. All right. That's <laughs> you, Cause you gotta, you gotta, right. So if you, you can say like, okay, Ben, I figured out how to break rule number one. I figured <laughs> out how to break rule number two. And uh, I figured out how to break rule number three, but the, it makes links more secure. Can you break all three simultaneously? Yeah. Yeah. And for a sustained period of time. Yeah. And yeah. that's where the security comes in. Okay. That's what makes it secure. So a bad, a greedy miner, a bad actor who wants to hack links, this is, that's what they need to do to break it. You need to pass all three rules all three. for a sustained period of time and keep control of the blockchain for a sustained period of time with maybe a, a pool of miners. Mm -hmm. um, I see. You know, is it impossible? No, it's not, it's not, it's not that it's, you can't be done, but the probability of it, if we're yes. right, yeah. is, it's so difficult. It's more difficult to do than what we have right now with, with Bitcoin, with Bitcoin. So really quick one to say, so, cause I'm thinking, you know, businesses want security. They need security. Yeah. Do you see this as a business setting it up and having this as one of their secure blockchain options? You know, Mark, that's really insightful what you said, cause you nailed it. Because what you just described isn't a cryptocurrency anymore. It's this kind of like yep. business, yeah. maybe using blockchain as a service or a distributed ledger technology, DLT. Yep. So, so basically, you, you nailed it on the head. And that's what we're trying to do is okay. now it's not about mining anymore and making money with mining because that's not really the incentive. Remember, and we, I didn't even mention this yet. The mining reward for each block on links is one link. There's <laughs> no incentive to mine links. Like, you're oh. never going to pay your power bill. Yeah. You're never going to pay for those expensive ASICs to mine links. Even if you were successful with a 51% attack and you control them all, you'd never get enough to pay for all those ASICs and all that hardware. Yeah. But the, so then why would you use it? And you nailed it. It's the businesses. So if I'm a business and I need to use a low cost blockchain in my technology, mm. maybe in my arcade game, you know, or maybe, you know, every pull of that, what's, what's the gambling thing? The slot machines. Slot machines, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so if I need to, you know, I need a, a good way to store the slot machine data, you know, or my tokens that come out. There's lots of different applications. I've, I've got a few that I'm working on myself. I'm really excited about. Um, nice. Wouldn't it be nice if you could kind of implement that technology really low cost and you wouldn't have to ask the question to the blockchain tech, you know, technology provider that you're using? Hey, do I got to set up miners and isn't that going to be really expensive? And how do I know it's going to the volatility of the price of the coin? I'm worried about that. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't exist here. It doesn't exist here. Now they can just, they don't have to worry about the miner. They can just turn on five raspberry Pis. Yeah. And they know that their blockchain is secure. Nice. And that's it, you know? You have it. <laughs> that's, that's it. So, yeah, it's kind of, it's a different way. I mean, basically what I'm saying is mining's dead. Mm. Uh, say it again. I mean, this, this is really what we're going into. It's really I'll put it, I'll, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll put it another way. Sort of like this. Here's the metaphor. All right. 
you, you do a little bit of coding, I think, right? Yeah, I, I got some SDKs popped up around here. <laughs> you know what? Um, you know what MySQL is? Database, MariaDB, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So MySQL is an open source database. Anybody can go grab it, download it, and they can install it onto a server. Yeah. And why would you do that? You do that because you're building an app for a customer. Mm -hmm. Or you're building an app for an idea that you have and you're coding it in PHP or Python or whatever yeah. language you choose. Right. But you need to store your data somewhere. That's cool. And blockchain as a service is no different. It's just another type of database. I see. Right. It's just uh, we store the data in a blockchain and once it's stored, it can't be changed. And you know that Tampa. as opposed to like a Maria or MySQL database where you can store data, you can do lots of cool things with it, mm -hmm. but it can be changed. You know, I see. so it's, I'm not saying it's better or worse. It's just another tool in the toolbox as a developer. Yeah. Yeah. So you. when you turn on your MySQL database, do you just expect the checks to start flowing in? Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't, right? You just turn it on. It's a tool. You're going to use it to build something. Yeah. Well, what we're doing is the same thing. Just because you turn on a blockchain, you start yeah. a blockchain project like, uh, yeah. I don't know, dogecoin <laughs> just because you turn on a dogecoin miner you just start making money all right i guess so but that doesn't really make sense i mean it's like saying i'm just going to turn on a mysql database server and and i'm going to start making money you make money because how you use it yeah this and this this really ties into how since we are super early in crypto super early in blockchain yeah you got these people comparing to the gold rush but the real gold rush is, is coming. It's not even like once people understand or start implementing the real world use cases, like, yes, you can make trillions, but it's like all this mining and all this watching the market every day is going to vanish because you're going to have the big players, the thinkers I, stepping into the game. I completely agree with you. And you know what? What about this? What if I got a new technology and when there's a lot of other competing technologies out there, what uh, if I roll out my technology with this really, really juicy incentive that m makes it kind of viral? Mm. And the technology is like, if you turn on my technology and put it on your mobile phone, I'll pay you $25 per, uh, per block. Yep. And, all, oh, and people are like, oh, crap, I got, this is so cool. I'm going to get 300 mobile phones and I'm going to make all this money. <laughs> What a really great way to get a bunch of news articles and spread the word around the world about your new technology. Yeah. Uh, that is what blockchain, that is what Bitcoin has done for the last 10 years. Yeah. And that's fine. What a great way to do free marketing and get people incentivized on the technology is basically pay them. That's true. And you know, you've now got this, we've got a multi-billion dollar industry, China, you know, you know the company I'm talking about that makes yeah. all the ASICs yeah. in the world, the big ones. You know, they're making billions of dollars a year selling these devices. Uh, that's great, but it's not sustainable and that's it's not going to be around for very long. Yeah. I think there's always going to be people mining, just like there's people using SQLite database. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lightweight database and it has its place, but there's also people that are using Oracle, which is a little bit more powerful. It's just another tool and it has its place. Yeah. Yeah. So uh yeah the mining story it's really romantic and a lot of people have gotten rich on it but that's not the future man no that's my argument at least i know that there's some people that <laughs> they don't like that idea <laughs> but that's okay i get it yeah i mean and like we were talking about earlier you know i i now see myself i'm stepping into my you know my visionary uh and and innovative just mindset and i know just living on earth just experiencing earth that you know money's cool but you know when you when you push the envelope when you create new curves create new in industries that's really where everyone can thrive you know personally you can fulfill whatever desire or passion you have if you invent something create something you know it's not all about just this rewards money and blocks that's it gets it's going to get old i know yeah, I agree. I agree with you. I think that new approaches and new innovation is uh, is a really good thing. Yeah. Hey, can you? We were talking earlier. Is there a way for me to share my screen? We actually have it running. I think you can. Can you? Do you see a share screen on your? Let me see. 
I'm checking. Hang on. Let's go to. Yeah, here we go. Can I share my screen and show it to you? Yep. All right. So I'm going to share a screen. Here is the terminal window. Do you see that right now? Whoa. Okay. Yep. I see it. Built in minor mining speed, hash yeah. per second. Can you see my mouse moving around? If uh -huh. I something? Yep. All right. So right now, this is what you're seeing right now is what I described to you earlier. It's running and it's nice. running in, in a test net. So those that don't know, a test net is kind of like a protected sandbox. Uh -huh. And it's like a clone of the production environment where you can kind of do stuff and try things. And if it, if you break something, it's no big deal. Yeah. 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 It's no big deal. It's safe. It's a safe place to test things. So right here, you can see a block came over the network. Yeah. This, this miner, this is a local miner. This is actually a raspberry Pi on my, in my closet that we're logged into right now. Okay. And we're on the test net and this raspberry Pi just got an update from the network and it said, Hey, we just new block block. 26,932. Uh -huh. It just got updated. Okay. So it updated its own uh, copy of its own blockchain. And it also did the verification work to verify that that blockchain is good. Yeah. Or that block is good. It passed rules one, two, and three. Yeah. I see up top so, the rule three failed right there. Yeah. So that one right there was, that was a block that this miner, this computer right here was mining. You can see it's mining again right here. It's mining uh -huh. measured in not petahashes or terahashes, but <laughs> measured in individual hashes per second. That's how Hash. slow this computer is. Hash Isn't that funny? <laughs> it's so slow. But it just found two blocks in that time. There, there's another one. It says, hey, my candidate block, here's the block hash. Yep. Here's the mining reward. That's the address that I want my mining reward. But it didn't pass rule three. And rule three yeah. was that one in 16 thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it actually said, so there it is, nine does not equal one. So there was, there was a one in 16 chance that that would match, and it didn't. I see. So this is just a slow Raspberry Pi. But remember, if someone came on the Lynx network with a big, powerful ASIC, uh -huh. they'd get the same behavior. Mm. Yeah, so let me share with you what that means. So you see the network kind of running right here. Yep. Um, it's just turning away on the test net. If I share my other screen, I'm going to click stop share and I'm going to choose the test net explorer. All right. So if we go to the test net explorer, I'm going to hit reload. So I don't know what block that was that confirmed a minute ago, but it might've been this one or 32. So there's the test net explorer and there on the right are all the addresses that have won previous blocks. Do you notice how there's no repeats? Yeah. The same guy isn't winning all the blocks over and over and over again. Uh -huh. Remember back to our bingo game, it's the same, it's not the same bingo guy winning all the bingo games. Nice. Yeah. So what do you think that makes it look like on the network? Here are <laughs> very yeah. decentralized. Very decent. This is not bad. So this this yeah, blue cool. guy right here, that might be a high powered ASIC that's worth yeah. $3,000 that some guy bought from some manufacturer in China. Nice. This right here might be my Raspberry Pi. Nice. Yeah. yeah. That's very decentralized. That uh, is very decentralized and <laughs> it's also secure. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So that is the problem that I think I described the problem. And I think I described our rules pretty well. And I think you can see the outcome of it. Man. And yeah, it's pretty neat. And so you can see it on testnet right now. If I bring up this other tab, there's the live network. Um, we activate in six, 68, 60, I'm sorry, 58,000 blocks from now, which is a few days from now. Wow. Um, and then our network will go from looking like this, <laughs> <laughs> which is a mining pool that we're friends with that supports 100%. us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that multiple US supports us. And nice. those guys, if you're if you're a miner and you want to make a buck and you and you need a mining pool, you should use multipool.us. They are just awesome and they are friends of ours and they support our project and nice. they've been, you know, helping us out to keeping our chain secure. And I talked to them and they know we're gonna roll out those no rules soon. And so eventually our network's gonna look like that. Wow. Yeah.
Man. And my uh, multi pool would just be one of those little pie slices. That's cool, man. For uh, yeah. so for 2019, can we as this rolls out, will will companies do you have companies already set to start using this, or is it just you know open range? Anyone come in? Yeah, again, you asked a great question. The answer is yes. <laughs> yeah, I've got letters of intent and I'm having conversations with businesses right now oh. that hear what I'm saying, they understand it. They're excited about what blockchain has to offer nice. and they see what we're doing and you know, the cost of entry, uh, the security, uh, the stability. And they're saying, Ben, we are interested in working yeah. with you on this. Can you, you know, finish up the connector code that we need to get your blockchain mm. working with our application? I see. And, and that's what we're working on right now. We're experimenting with that code right now. And we have it, well, I have testing of it running. So we know it works. It's not just theoretical, but we've got it working in our test environment. So it's really exciting. Yeah. So again, it's like, yeah, those people are making money mining and we'll continue to do so over there on those other projects. That's cool. Yeah. We're actually supporting real businesses that have, you know, bus different business plans and they're going to, continue to generate their revenue and do what they do uh -huh. on top of using this tool, using this DLT blockchain as a service within their software. Beautiful, man. Yeah. It's pretty exciting. Yeah. It's just, yeah. wow. Um, yes. I can't wait to uh, interview the first company that, uh, that's online planks. <laughs> I don't know if he's going to do that. I, there, I wonder if there's some, it, that's a great thing to think about it. You know, I haven't, I haven't wondered about that yet uh, or talked, talked about them with, about it yet. Like, is there a security implication for them <laughs> to discuss that kind of stuff? That's true. Right? I, um, <laughs> well, well, we'll let them stay behind the scenes, but you know, I, and I think you can agree with this too. I love putting out information and just putting out media that's, that has a different narrative and people can, they can learn something. Like say, wow, this is, totally different from what I'm looking at in the news, wherever else I'm learning something and I can start to see the use case in my life, in companies, you know, and abroad. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's really helpful when there's context. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, like, like I chat with mom, you know, we all talk to mom and you know, she's like, what's this Bitcoin thing you're working on? But when I, and it's hard to go into the minutia with it, but then when I give her some context, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, mom, it's kind of like, you know, when you log into your online bank and you see the ledger that has your checking account. Yeah. Um, we just do that better. And she, yeah. and, and she's, and she goes, Oh, okay. I get that. Yeah. We need yeah. that. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. And you know, just even when you hear bank grade encryption, you know, you can Google that, you know, you hear about AES, you hear about SHA-256, like all the information is out there. You know, it's just, now here's another way, another you know, solution that will be the future. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's, that's right. I mean, it's when you take a tool, you know, we tech nerds, I think we annoy people a lot because we're, <laughs> <laughs> we're doing what we're doing, we're building it. We see it a different way, but it's the marketers and the advertisers and the branding people that are really brilliant because they're able to kind of convert the techie nerd stuff, the product projects that we have and the products that we're building, they're able to convert that into real world context. They're able to tell a story that gets people excited about the technology by understanding it in a little bit easier way, a little bit you know, easier on the street kind of way. Not everybody's a computer scientist. No. no. You know, mom's, you know, mom's <laughs> not a stupid person. But when I talk to her about, you know, you know, bad entropy in a random number generator <laughs> or, you know, the quality of a random number generator or what a nonce is. She looks, her eyes glaze over. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that doesn't matter. But if I instead tell her, listen, when you swipe your card at the gas station, uh -huh. you know, encryption and nonces and random numbers uh, and prime numbers are really important that keep that transaction secure. secure yeah, yeah. Now, that's, that's what this technology, that's just one way this technology is leveraged. And, and you she's know, like, oh, all right, I get that. 
you know, that hey. makes sense to me. And, and the thing is, everyone doesn't have to understand the super technical, you know, it's just like, just do what you're good at. <laughs> you don't have to be the yeah. smartest person in the room. You can be friends with the smartest person in the room. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and I know I'm not the smartest guy in the room. And there's guys that are working on this project that are far smarter than me. <laughs> We've had to change the idea and refine it and modify it because smarter people than me have said, uh-uh, no, Ben, that won't work. And <laughs> well, what about this? What about that? Uh-uh. And the truth is, after all the trial and error and all the failures, we've arrived at something that, gee whiz, that might actually work. Nice, nice. You know? Yeah, I get emails from people that tell me um, my idea is dumb all the time. <laughs> and I don't know why they do that, just to write me a, a nasty letter. Like, you're, you're going to get hacked. Oh. Okay, great. Uh, would you like to hack it on the test net so we can learn from that? Right, yeah, no, yeah. I'm just writing you a letter so <laughs> I can be a jerk. All right, well, <laughs> thanks. But, you know, if someone, if someone smarter than me wants to write in and say, this is here, here's an idea to make it even better yeah. or to yeah. fix a potential problem. You yeah. know what? Yeah. Our days are numbered, Mark. You know, I want to <laughs> do something good before I die. Oh, uh, yep. I just go finished. Ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Finish your, finish your thought. I was just going to say, if it's not, you know, volunteering and feeding children or you know going out and you know doing some volunteer thing building houses for people i mean this is what i'm doing because it yeah. will impact the world in some small way somehow yeah and i just i just did a video i think it was i forget the company but what i was talking about it was like someone said oh it wouldn't work or whatever i'm like okay if it doesn't work give them some solutions you know what side of the fence are you on do you want to be on the nagging side? Oh, this is not going to work. Is that helping your life? Or he said, you know what? It's not going to work. Here, try these things. You know? Yeah. How do you want to create your reality? Yeah. That's what, I mean, that's what mom said to me when I was a kid. Like, you got an opinion on something? That's great. You want to complain about something? That's good. But you can't show up and tell everybody how they're wrong without proposing a solution. <laughs> you know, if that's what you want to do, then you are defined as a troll. But if you want to show up and say, you're wrong and here's a better way, well, then that's a solution provider yeah. Yeah. or at least an idea person. You don't even have to be right, but at least you tried. There you go. Hey. You know, and, and that, you know, that also comes down to, um, I was talking about this just a couple of days ago with the developers, really. He said, he's like, Ben, I like working with you because you're okay to admit when you're wrong. Mm. You know, and I'm yeah. wrong a lot, man. <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, you know what? So, so somebody went, when one of the developers like, Ben, that math is wrong. You know, mm -hmm. we got to rewrite that function. I see. I thought I had it. And he's, and then, you know, like, well, all right, let's just go over the evidence. Let's just test it. There you go. And I there see. it is. You know, you can say it, it's wrong. Okay. So we fix it. I'm okay with that. I'd rather we discover something be wrong now. Yeah. Yeah then wrong later i'm not going to take it personally i just want to fix it and make it better and get past it it's like take the ego you know out of the project there you go that's that's the can our, yeah i'll admit i got just as much of an ego as anybody else <laughs> <laughs> you know but I, I try to i try to do my best to detach myself from being personally and emotionally connected to the success of each little piece i don't have to be right every time i'd like to be <laughs> cool man all right so that was h-p-o-w-h pow and we yeah used with, a, with a little bit of philosophy <laughs> added at the end there yeah um uh, thanks for tuning in please leave, leave your comments below email us question us pick it apart um let me know your ideas if you have oh, we should probably there. yeah we should probably post the so uh to read more about links you can go to get links.io there we go and mark's on the discord and so am i we have our discord that link's on the website. You can read our white paper. And uh, oh, and if you want to fire up the test net, you can go to the GitHub repo and download the code. Those links are also on the website, on the nice. downloads page. Cool. And I'll leave links yeah. here below in this video when you watch. So now you have the paper, you have the video, the audio, book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks for your time, Mark. I appreciate these videos. I, I really appreciate you giving us the time and the support that you do. Yeah, thank you, Ben. You know, I. I took it upon myself, and I, I think I said this in the last video, last year probably, when I first started in crypto, eyes were glazed, everything was going over my head. I was like, and there was this one small voice in me said, just just keep going, man, this, this is you, keep going. And I had to tell myself that every day for like 30 or 60 days, I, just, I was like, ah. Oh. 
<laughs> I was like, oh, this is just too much. But I kept with it, stuck with it, and I really wanted, I really am creating my reality. You know, I'm surrounding myself with peers and mentors who I believe in and who I know, you know, will change, change the way that we see things, the way we do things, and so on. <laughs> yep. Yep. I agree with you. I agree with you. All right, man. We'll be back. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. I look forward to chatting with you again. Yes, indeed. All right. Peace out. Have a good day.